Okay. Uh, the very first point here is we wanted to use NetBeans for our, for our uh, integrated development environment requirements. There are various tools available as far as HTML or maybe for designing purpose. Uh, one being I could say uh, Adobe's uh, Dreamweaver which is uh, very popular and has various debugging option and uh, most of the I mean uh, modern development uh, notepad kind of thing notepad plus or uh, there are a couple of things which can be put in use as IDE may not be serving the full requirement of an IDE but it will also help you to have a error free code and easy option to organize your content. Uh, but I prefer uh, NetBeans for some reason because it could be a de facto development uh, environment for all my requirement especially on uh, when it comes to Java web based application development or HTML5 development which has extensive support on uh, developing HTML5 applications. So let us see what is that first. So if you have your NetBeans installed. <coughs> You would be given a latest NetBeans of uh, just something like 8.0.2. So it's a typical uh, IDE as we uh, know, like uh, most of the IDE, such as Eclipse, contains a project pane. Uh, maybe in this uh, case, uh, to the left, we have a project pane where our currently open projects going to be there. And this is where the right side you are going to edit your code maybe some of the debugging options are available here. So all you need to go ahead and create right click on the project plane or click on file new project. Remember I am using Macintosh but uh, most of the interface will be same in Windows as well so you don't need to worry about that. So all you need to go ahead and create a new project by right clicking on the project plane otherwise click on file and new project. depending on your installation uh, you may have a various option to pick your first project uh, of course our learning point right now starts with html5 so we are going to see or uh, create an application which is of something to do with html5 but uh, you will have various options you can use the netbeans for your other development as well so i'm going to choose in this case html5 if you want to give any name for your HTML5 application, say yeah, something like typically your project location uh, depends on your installation path. It, it usually uh, finds a place in documents folder as far as Windows is concerned. But if you want, you can change it, but you can just otherwise keep it as it is, keep the defaults. This is where the NetBeans is trying to help you uh, with the various templating system like uh, we'll see them uh, maybe we'll introduce uh, what are all these templates uh, angular bootstrap something if you notice these things are grayed out because i'm not going to choose any templates on board but uh, we do have a various templating mechanisms uh, templating is nothing but the set of uh, i mean javascript libraries or maybe some sort of additional apis which will speed up your development uh, Angular is right now getting quite popular because it's widely considered as one of the stable client side uh, MVC um, model view controller and Bootstrap is uh, quite famous for their responsive web designing like uh, uh, based on the screen with and height it automatically adjusts the CSS. So there are various uh, other uh, I mean what you call uh, templating mechanism available. Uh, <coughs> But as of now, since we are starting freshly, so we don't want to have any templates on board. Rather, we try to create our own templating system. Just go ahead and create. And of course, I'm not going to need anything uh, as of now. So I'm going to click finish. So, NetBeans creates a project structure for you. Uh, we don't need to worry about that much because it's nothing to do with the uh, actual <coughs> implementation or testing in the device but few things we need to notice the very first file was created called index.html and the file is open right now which has some sort of codes already been written and everything is fine for us and in this point few points to be taken is the very first file most of the system most of the server uh, I mean uh, software such as Apache or any other variants 
usually index.html is considered as a default root file structure, the name. Uh, of course, that could be changed in the configuration file, but most of the time the default file, for example, if you are searching uh, something through the browser, all you need to type the domain name only, the default file will always be in index, which will have a prefix index, maybe depending on the server installation, maybe JSP, PHP or maybe in HTML. So typically the very first file which is right now created is called index.html. Uh, just probably I'll remove the non part. Of course, this doc type refer HTML refers. For example, the HTML5 does not have any kind of doc type uh, declaration here. If you notice the previous version of HTML, we used to give a various uh, uh, doc document type stating that this is a strict one or maybe it may not be a strict one or something like that. For HTML5, it has been further simplified. All you can simply start with a word called HTML. If you want to remove the other part also, of course, you can very well remove it. Uh, <coughs> this thing may not be mandatory, but uh, keeping the viewport size, viewport size because the HTML is uh, always considered as a mobile first configuration, configuration. For example, the site or the app what you are going to create, first uh, the compatibility is given for a mobile phones. Later, the compatibility is extended to a desktop mode or whatever it is. It means uh, your site should always uh, looking better even in a small viewport. Viewport means the size of the content where it is spread. Maybe your browser size or whatever it is. So I'm trying to say uh, uh, do, uh, keep the width of the particular viewport as equivalent to a device width and initial scale 1.0. Do not magnify it. Keep it as the default one. So these things you can leave it as a default whatever it has been specified here. If you want to uh, notice, uh, uh, if, you, if you notice that there is a title set something like uh, you can modify my app something. So typically HTML tag start with the HTML tag open and close which is uh, nested as in this case there is a head tag which is considered which is going to contain your title. Uh, declarations of your, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the content uh, uh, UTF type or UTF 16 type or whatever it is and viewport and also it is going to contain any link for external style set or JavaScript or inline style set or whatever it may be. You can keep this place for initializing something uh, when it's something to do with your HTML or JavaScript or style sheet. And this is where the visible part start with body tag starting and there is one uh, DOM exists I'm, I'm going to say DOM quite a bit now because uh, I don't want to say a tag or something it looks so uh, I mean amateuristic because uh, whatever these tags I'm going to consider them as a document or object models I mean it is a container for me so it's, it's a wrapper for my content if you if you notice to do write content something is there this is actually the content which is going to be displayed when this particular application starts running first terminology I'm going to say any div or any other component which is or tags which is going to be placed inside body I'm going to call them as a DOM document object model and this div is a container uh, which is nothing but an empty uh, wrapper I mean it's a wrapper of course it doesn't have any uh, look and feel it's a container and within that thing uh, I mean there is a content residing we want to verify make sure you have your Chrome you may have this twice uh, I mean uh, shown but make sure you select the second one because uh, in order to embed the Chrome you may need a plugin instead you just choose the Chrome in this uh, second list you will see a list of browser installed in your uh, I mean app your computer. So I'm going to choose Chrome. All I need to hit run. <coughs> it will automatically open the particular URL. Remember, see if it is running in the local host 8383 means the NetBeans already contains a server program. Something is there just running in the port number 8383. This is what your application name what you gave and this is what the file is running. HTML5. Of course, the content is visible for me. I don't need to put that because it, 
that index.html is default one. If you do not specify the file name, automatically the index.html will be fetched and be executed. So right now, this is the only content I have, which is getting displayed. And I have no idea like how uh, things are getting displayed and how it is being uh, looking in the left mode direction of your browser, how it is possible and how it came. Of course, we are going to find or maybe we are going to give a directions to the content where it should get placed. So I'm going to put everything as default one. So keep in habit uh, as far as a professional application developer, you should be very well versed on your shortcuts instead of depending on the mouse quite a bit. You uh, depending on the operating system, it may vary. Uh, for example, if you look at the file, the save all option or save option is there. For me, it's a command S. For you, maybe it is a control S. So keep hitting saving whenever whatever changes you do. So make a habit uh, and try to see whatever uh, I mean shortcuts available for you. Try to put in use. It may be <coughs> slightly difficult to start with, but that will tremendously speed up your application development. Uh, in fact, we are going to have a tough time because this particular exercise we are going to learn from uh, NetBeans and the later part which is going to be an Android studio which is uh, exclusive for Android may have slightly different uh, shortcut keys but the experience will make uh, uh, things understandable so try to use the shortcuts as much as possible so I've saved the content right now I just uh, I, 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 I when I run it I don't see any content because I just removed everything right now I only have a body tag so HTML what we saw now head tag head contains a title declarations of external files a link of external files so maybe meta type the character encoding whatever it is uh, of course uh, it contains information about the viewport I would recommend not to modify that much keep the defaults uh, we'll see them whenever if it is required to be modified because we are going we may need to add a mobile compatibility a little later to start with everything let it be a default one so HTML is a root tag for us and head which contains the title of your app remember I'm saying app because it's not a web or something a project or something like which is going to run in the server it, this is going to may or may not run in the server it may be running inside the phone <coughs> or phone file system otherwise it may be sometime possibly it would be in the server so chances are there on both the side so for me it is going to be in a web app so app is a uh, the most commonly used terminology for developers to refer an application which is going to run on the gadgets or maybe small devices so this small app uh, is just going to be based of HTML5 HTML5 does not contain any doc type. You don't need to mention that. Simply start with the HTML, open and close uh, tags, and of course, immediately after HTML, I, I probably go ahead and declare head tag with a few information such as title, meta tags, and of course, if any external file requirement comes, I may expand it a little later. And then the visible part starts, which is called body. The body is a visible content area where whatever you write is going to be displayed. You don't need any wrapper, simply you can go ahead typing the content. If you notice, this is simply reflecting here. So the point here is whatever you type inside the body, which is going to be displayed in the browser, mean it is going to be an actual content of a body. It could be anything but that won't serve the purpose for a normal web page or any other uh, a page to look further I may need to give a layouting so that it will find its place in the appropriate uh, directions or location or whatever uh, I mean uh, uh, I mean uh, orientation of particular uh, web page so I may have to have a various styling techniques in order to keep my content organized so I may want some other technique in order to uh, have my content properly <coughs> placed within the document object model 
so now uh, I was talking about the need of creating a simple website I think it is there behind uh, I would like to have a header and the left bar content bar the center one the right bar which is going to be an additional navigation bar and the footer so almost I may want to keep my content organized in such a way uh, with a different box kind of elements stating the header could be a box and the left and right bar two additional box are totally three the content bar the which is going to find in the center is going to be fourth one and the fifth one is a footer which spread across the left right and the content bar so almost five boxes I need to organize uh, if possible I tried to show you the pictorial presentation I'll let me create it programmatically here it is so okay HTML5 refers uh, three different uh, I mean uh, concept I already explained one is the HTML itself a tag based language which is uh, right now we are seeing here another one a cascade style scripting or maybe a style sheet what we popularly call to give a presentation alignments and the finally one uh, the JavaScript for DOM man manipulation or document object mod manipulation according to the runtime so the combination of three is actually forms the HTML5 learning program so now I'm going to introduce a style sheet so we can have our content organized but uh, first one <laughs> A style sheet see remember I am putting inside the head it opens and closes with a tag called style from here I may go ahead and declare style sheets remember this style sheet is declared or of course it is finding its place inside the document itself or inside this HTML itself other chances are I may create an external file I can simply give a link so we will see there, there, what are all the possibilities are there according to our requirement if the file gets too much bigger we may go ahead splitting them into a different files so that a modularity of uh, your application could be kept intact uh, need of modularity for example modular design what we popularly call keeping the your code as a small small discrete elements and join it whenever required and create your complex object so this helps you to keep your application logic simpler and reusable and of course uh, uh, that forms a uh, easy way and gives a easy way of debugging your application as well those kind of higher uh, kind of word or maybe those terminology will come back but uh, let us start signing our page <coughs> I'm going to start with a, uh, a DOM called div it's a div based design I mean it's a box based design uh, everything is box in HTML as far as this particular design what is box you'll come to know which we already had I'm going to create a box uh, immediately after body I'm going to consider that as a container for all my information so in the style I'm going to put a dot container and curly brace <coughs> open and close the dot denotes this particular selector this is called class selector what is class you see <coughs> I'm going to give a width let me give a 900 pixel width the minimum height height also I can give but in a normal approach we do not know what is going to be the size of the content the content may be smaller or bigger so I would prefer to give a minimum height instead of maximum or just a height 
say some 800 pixel margin okay let me give a margin as a split base margin top is zero zero pixel or zero both are fine margin bottom margin left i'm going to make it auto because i don't know the size of the browser margin right also i'm going to keep auto it means the container which is going to start from the top because I have given 0, 0 mean take the position from top 0 pixel immediately uh, the moment your browser starts. It means this particular area. So from the top I have given 0 pixel mean it will be immediately starting the container in the margin position 0 or top position and spread across the bottom position 0 from bottom 0 pixel mean it will come up to the end and left and right I have given auto because it will put your container into a center position so that from left it will give a auto uh, I mean spacing and the right also it will give a auto spacing and your container would be exactly in the center how do I verify that To verify that, I'm going to give some background color. Background color or background also will do. Color chooser. Give some colors. If you do not have net means you would end up typing everything manually. You see, I, I took very few seconds to prepare the document. In fact, I got a lot of suggestions here. If you do not have net means, make sure you type everything properly. Remember the divider or maybe the DOM called div whatever I gave, I am defining uh, with this uh, element called class. Class is going to contain an attribute value uh, called container in this case because the container is a class selector because I said anything start with a dot is considered as a class selector. We have three type of selector. Uh, ID selector, uh, tag selector and of course the class selector. We will see them one by one but uh, right now what we have seen is a class selector. A class selector uh, always start with the dot uh, notation in uh, style sheet and in given HTML document there may be more than one class selector. I mean of course the same class selector could be repeated anyway. So it is just a common declaration of particular DOM stating that any DOM having that particular class defined automatically would respect whatever alignment, or whatever spacing or whatever design we specified in the style sheet. It means the div is going to have a class attribute value con called container. So this div will follow all this pattern whatever we have designed going to contain with 900 pixel minimum height uh, 1000 pixel top bottom 0 0 and left right auto and I have a background some colors. If you notice uh, uh, almost I got what I required but uh, still it means my content is uh, aligned centrally my container is in uh, pretty center as I expected the left and right margins are properly squeezing the content forcing it to be always into center because left and right margin what we have given here is auto whereas top and bottom we have given zero pixel mean where is that from the top of course there is a spacing we'll see what what exactly that but it always start from the top and it ends exactly just at the end of your browser. It occupies 1000 pixel height because minimum height we have given 1000 pixels and it is the container is always finding the place in the center. Okay, uh, the point here is why it is not touching the exact 
topmost edge of your browser maybe the body the dom called body in this case contains some sort of default margin maybe so that is actually forcing its child called div this particular div uh, with the some spot of a margin so i'm going to do some additional fixes now i'm going to create a tag selector called body remember tag selector would be exactly the same tag name so a tag selector would not have a kind of additional declaration the name of the tag itself becomes a style sheet attribute so i am going to say hey a uh, body should not have any margin is it a margin or padding well come to know maybe i'll try to keep the margin zero okay it's fine now now that uh, additional space went away now my content is exactly the center and the box laid out exactly to the center of your browser this doesn't follow any hierarchy first you need to understand the style sheet it doesn't mean since i declared body always on the top it, it will be first executed or this will be last the the style sheet takes in charge according to a hierarchy wherever it is being defined for example If you notice the container defined twice the point is this particular container first executed and had a background something green color or maybe light green but whereas the second one contain some other color so the style sheet would respect the last executed one so in according to this this has been executed last so it respected all these elements and only thing it does replaced this particular thing with this so according to the style sheet whatever executed is last is going to be reflecting in your dom but it's not a good practice anyway just want to tell you this is actually possible so i'm just going to remove i'm going to keep my code quite organized and of course the net means can also organize to remember the shortcut yeah. uh, maybe i can increase the width a little bit maybe 950 i'll keep yes Typically, it is yes, but uh, there is uh, some sort of uh, adjustment. For example, any code block. For example, according to style sheet, yes, your sequential is accepted because within the style sheet, there is one by one things would be executed. Within the HTML, one by one things would be executed. The point here is. uh there may be chances for example uh you may not be noticing right now but in order for have a javascript in place where javascript have some sort of declaration defined the javascript should take in charge only when the content is fully loaded on the browser that may be an instance so that time i would have to verify whether everything is loaded properly then i initiate the javascript elements then that javascript will have its own sequential order and that it may modify in turn the html or dom or anything so in that case you may wonder which took a precedence on which actually consider or which was executed first typically yes everything sequential top to bottom from html to it starts loading line by line one by one gets interpreted it's been displayed in and of course started for example if you notice in this case
uh, I think I'll once I define that uh, example for I mean uh, JavaScript will come to know. So as it start executing, it is aware of there is a such a style sheet exist. Now it is ha it has no problem of rendering this particular container and attach the particular style elements to this DOM. But however, if the style sheet is defined somewhere, which is just after this uh, particular DOM loaded, may not be respected because it loses the scope, it does not know such a tag exists or such attribute value exists. We will see them uh, once we put that uh, JavaScript in place because the JavaScript is entirely an asynchronous call then we will come to know which takes a precedent and what, what is exactly happening. But as of now what we need to understand within the HTML everything sequential, within the style sheet everything is sequential. So uh, everything respected <coughs> one by one. Okay, now I have a, just a container. I gave a background coloring only to know because I do not have any content. That's why I gave a color. It's not mandatory to keep a color here. Okay, now this is actual content space. I put a, remember uh, I just gave a, I hit the enter key in order to define a child DOM inside the container uh, DOM. Now, I'm going to need. I'll also type logo or something like that. This is where I'm going to display my logos, header, or whatever it is. It's there. Uh, it's not looking good because I really want to have my header logo occupy some space. I have a divider or maybe a DOM. I am going to need of another uh, class selector. I'm going to keep it as a header, some name. First thing, I want to keep the exactly the same width of my content container width so that it entirely occupies minimum height or probably I can hard code the height because I know the size of my header or if you want minimum height, minimum height is safe because it automatically adjusts the height of the particular DOM depending on the size of the content. For example, if you put a large image inside, automatically the header size will be adjusted. So I always prefer to keep a minimum height instead of having something hard coded. Because the height size, we, are, we cannot restrict because the content may be a little longer or shorter or whatever it may be. So I'm going to keep a minimum height, maybe some 60 pixels. Okay. Let me give a background as well because we want to see whether the header is there or not. So let me give some some lot of kind of color. I'm going to keep this particular class as a header. Okay. We notice within the container remember this kind of pink background resides inside the container your container still goes behind it but it has occupied the particular header has occupied the topmost position of your container and having a minimum width of 60 pixel and it is occupying the entire width of your container if you want to say uh, like uh, keep a width slightly lower than the actual container width we notice it is slightly giving a, a white space or something so it means it is not fully occupying the entire container width but my requirement to have a header so I'm going to give some sort of the same width because I know the content is exactly <coughs> the same I think uh, I may slightly increase it to some more size some height uh, we'll think about how to align this uh, header or something little later but uh, first point to have our own uh, layout done first then we think about the contents or whatever we need to place it inside <coughs> <coughs> 
first point the header or container everything as a box that's what i wanted you to imagine a box a box a bigger box in this case container a smaller box which is kept inside the container box uh, in this case called header the size of the box is uh, exactly same as the width of the container but whereas the height of the box of the header container is slightly less of course large i mean it is very less it is 100 pixel uh, this is fine but i want to keep another box here for uh, my left navigation because my requirement was left center and right containers or boxes and of course with the footer so what i'm going to do one more the header part st stops there itself another child tag for a container class i'm going to create so make sure you hit the enter button accordingly do not keep it nested inside the header because this is another point So I'm going to name it as a right navigation, right nav, whatever it is. Some name. This time the width is going to be calculate your total width is 950 pixel. Okay, uh, 200, 200, uh, 400, whatever remaining we can keep it for a center. So I'm going to keep the right navigation bar a width of 200 pixel. Minimum height, uh, maybe I can give some 800 pixel. I want to keep within the minimum height of the container because I want to give some more space for the footer to sit. So I'm just slightly keeping the lesser height for my right navigation bar. And for a background to verify whether it is visible. So give a background, background color both are same. So let me choose another different colors. I think I have to define it. Right navigation. Everything looks fine for it. So 200 pixel is being taken exactly to the left of my the box called container. Uh, obvious reason may be because the very first container which has occupied the topmost position entirely occupying the width of the container there is no space further that's why automatically this particular nav bar came next to the particular uh, what you call the header because there is no space automatically the box finds the immediate available space and it has found the leftmost space 200 pixel it has occupied and I need one more box and another one more box so see for safer side uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to force the container float always on the leftmost direction so, mean the float left will make sure your box always find the place immediately to the left of your parent container provided the space is available I'll let you know what I'm trying to say I'm going to make my header slightly lesser now so 650 650 750 850 950 300 pixels I have remaining space after the header is occupied uh, 650 pixel in that case what will happen so this particular 600 will not be occupied in such a case since I have given the float particular uh, night right navigation occupy with some sort of space <coughs> 200 pixels in other case <coughs> let me try to bring it to a 200 pixel let me give this also float left now the problem is the header only occupied 200 pixel 
this guy also have a float left capability and the right navigation also have a float capability left so immediately in the container there was a space available so it the right navigation occupied that space so in order to put my right navigation always to the bottom of this particular header or logo area i need to make sure the logo fully occupies the width so that there won't be any space for this guy and automatically this particular container will be forced to be always below to the header now if i force some 850 or 950s or exact height exact width sorry now since it has occupied the entire width there is no space further within the container the right navigation bar immediately finds the place of course it is trying to be always left but since there is no space automatically it has come below to the header loop and then it finds a place here i'm going to keep a float left throughout for all my boxes to make sure always available space is occupied from left most direction onwards <coughs> next one uh, class name i'll give you later <coughs> this is where i'm going to keep main content okay i want to give a main content with some specific so mean i'll just give a name mean let the width be i'm going to keep a right, uh, left navigation bar that is also going to be 200 pixels or so 200 200 400 would be taken what is available for me of course uh, 550 pixels so accordingly calculate min height or minimum height also i want to give 800 pixel to verify things are visible i am going to keep a background <coughs> and be some color i am going to keep the float left for this as well so i am going to give a class attribute value in this case okay pretty good header left navigation bar the right content uh, of course uh, uh, in this case uh, actually it's a left navigation bar you guys could have me alerted naming convention nobody followed it it's actually left right So the left bar and the contained where that your actual content is going to reside and what is available what is remaining of course the, the box is still empty because the green according to us is an empty space and I am going to keep a right navigation bar there so right now I can go ahead and going to create a right navigation bar I hope it is going to be similar to the same but uh, better we will give a right nav also maybe we will have a different background I am going to keep a width same because I know the available space which is nothing but remaining 200 pixel give float left for this guy also even though it is finding a place in the exact to the right but the remaining space what we have is a left oriented one so I'm going to keep it as well. left now notice header 
left navigation, center navigation, I mean uh, center which is for our content and right navigation bar is also full. Now almost I achieved what I wanted, of course the header, left, center content and right navigation. I already have a space left for my footer to occupy. So I can define a footer. width is going to be exactly the same uh, of my whole container size what is the size is 950 because the footer is going to spread across all the containers and minimum height probably I don't need to give it but uh, let me give some 100 pixel this is also going to keep the float left yes, yes. I, I, I prefer I'm a left guy so, so let it be whatever my orientation background color okay we have footer also done food already for us so we got an header a left navigation bar where we'll keep a menus maybe this is where our content is going to be displayed maybe our home page or somebody's picture some description or whatever a right navigation maybe for additional where we'll keep a social networking stuff something like that and the footer which will display the copyrights information or whatever some other typical design of this HTML you can use this particular design to create n number of possible layouting technique for example this is what I was saying some pages may not have a header or maybe these three content immediately start on footer alone or some page may have header left bar and the content may not be having a right bar some pages may not be having footer so with the whatever thing required you can keep it other thing you can remove it and you can produce n number of combination of layouts to have your particular web page look like and properly aligned across all the browser elements one this case after this is fine but automatically when i go the scroll bars were added and what is the minimum size I gave for the uh, minimum support is 950 pixel which is uh, well within the limit of standard CRT monitors uh, usually contain 1064 pixel or something like that I don't remember 1054 or 64 pixel the standard CRT monitors contain so so from normal CRT monitors to a flat my computer is slightly uh, what do you call a white screen one so even though it displays pretty well but uh, though there is a white space but my content is always centered so that uh, my alignment always kept intact and there will be always a header left bar and right bar and content bar and the footer will be there <coughs> now there are a couple of flexible thing I can do I can get rid of the minimum height now for the container because every other boxes in my container already has a minimum height attribute defined. So it's pretty elastic if you do not specify any size. Nothing will change. Assume the footer size I am reducing to 50 pixel. The content automatically adjusted, no white space. Maybe I can even reduce the minimum height for all other, for example, left navigation. I have minimum height, I'm going to make everything as 700. Otherwise, if I keep only this guy as 700, what will happen? We'll see. Uh, this white space has come. So, I'm going to keep everything 700. Of course, automatically the sizing got adjusted. So, 
to start with for my flexibility i had a minimum So minimum height I gave for a container which is a wrapper for all my other boxes but later I realized okay every other individual boxes already contain a hard coded value so I don't need to keep any height for my container. If you want to keep a minimum height for example, or specific height say 1200 pixel slightly larger than what is our inner containers have occupied this is the problem I mean the box still have some more space left after occupying the contents so in order to avoid that thing uh, what I can I can go ahead and remove it so let it take a flexible height so that it spread across properly to the given layout mean each attribute of the specific uh, I mean boxes contain a minimum height attribute one value specified and everything properly occupying the given space if you try to make something else for example header if I have want to keep uh, width uh, bigger than the container allowed me to keep if I keep this first point it is overshooting the container size even though it did not disturb my look and feel fine okay I'm going to keep the left bar some 600 pixel this left bar has occupied 600 pixel width that immediate next which need to find a free space available in the left side which minimum required 550 pixel width does not have the adequate width here that's why it went down from the left whatever the free space available these boxes will try to fit the space but the problem here is the left bar has already occupied the 600 pixel width what is remaining available maybe some 350 pixel but this particular box requires 550 pixel to occupy so since it does not have a space <coughs> it went <coughs> to the left of the below position mean it allows to occupy the full minimum height whatever we specified whatever space left afterwards it has occupied and uh, whatever left is available free is given to the right navigation bar. so chances are there you may further mess it up that's the reason I always maintain a calculation first I created the main box I know okay this is a box is going to contain 900 pixel width and I notice okay let the header occupy the entire width of my box I gave exact same width of my container so right now it is already overshooting so we need to put it back to the same width of my container 950 pixels okay then I made a small calculation because my content area right now is total with 950 so left bar and right bar each takes 200 pixel so 200 200 400 pixel has gone remaining is going to be given for the main container area which is going to be 550 pixel if I keep this kind of a aspect ratio clearly you will you will always get your expected layout otherwise that's the purpose of kept I kept it float left because I want to see whether what is exactly happening if I do not keep the float left the content may either go right or left somewhere I don't know what is actually occupying the given space so for me everything is going to float from the left point with the given space is available so in this case left navigation bar I'm going to retract it back to a 200 pixel width so it will immediately retract to a 200 pixel then the left space will have some space available that would be given to the main content and another bar which is again going to stick to a left direction but it still finds 200 pixel width so it is occupying here and what is remaining is fully given to the footer now you are getting this required layout this is what you need to do to start with 
few things uh, we did we created a, a style tag which is going to contain your style attribute definitions like uh, uh, selectors such as class selector tag selector and id selector id selector i went to go show what it is but anything you do not define any kind of a special character such as dot or hash which is usually considered as a tag selector a tag selector will always be in the same name of your dom for example body i can also create a tag selector such as div it means any all divs will respect this attribute first and then along with the class definition whatever it's been defined but it will become catastrophic because we have already defined various class selectors we don't want to mess it up but a particular tag selector will always have the same name of your dom for example uh, let me keep a heading so given a space there i'm going to keep a head tag h1 is a predefined uh, dom available which will magnify your text for example my app h1 is the highest one so if you notice a slightly a magnified a content available i want to keep the h1 always float in the right direction what i can do i can create a, a tag selector wherever the h1 is referred say make it right so the h1 will always find the flow uh, i mean floating point I mean it will start from the leftmost direction let's go there <laughs> instead i don't want to mess the whole class because i may have another h1 in my uh, what do you call the main content as well i'm giving a uh, i may have another h1 in my content area as well but this guy also went into a right direction this is not what i expected i want this particular header to come in the left direction so if you have a specified requirement better not to use a tag selectors because the tag selector will reflect everywhere the same tag is being used that's the reason i selected tag selector only for a body because body is a single entity let it reflect but whereas other div elements i go ahead and created a class selector instead of the tag selector because i may have a div uh, various div or maybe the dom which is repeated quite a bit so i have chosen the uh, particular class selector class selector will always have a will start with the prefix dot and will always be defined with a, a dom attribute called class with a value whatever you specify that so i want to have this h1 slightly different in this case what i can do since this component repeated twice i'll also introduce one more thing which is called id heading it's all my user defined name it's not something like which is already existing id mean identity of your tag some unique name id should not be repeated id should be once it is taken for one particular tag or dom should not be given to other doms so heading my content something so now i am going to differentiate there is two h1 uh, dom exists but each have their own identity so in that case i can put a prefix hash it's already giving suggestion for me heading this will follow this style attributes another one my content will follow this one so in this case this is going to follow the float right <coughs> this is going to follow So no problem. So this guy is finding the place in the left. 
right. So point here is this one is called tag selector. This is ID selector. And this kind of a selector is called class. Depending on the scenario, a tag selector finds the takes the same name of your DOM, exactly the same name of your DOM. An ID selector, which is going to have a prefix hash, and which will be referred with the particular attribute definition called ID. So whatever you define within ID scope will be expected. I think something has happened. So it will contain a prefix hash. An ID is always a unique identity for your DOM. Once the ID is taken by a particular DOM, the same ID should not be used throughout your HTML page. This is very important point. If you have the same ID reflected, both the DOM will be accepting the same definition which will again confuse your design and layout. If you have a purpose where I want to have a same selector and attribute to be respected, I want to use multiple times mean safely go ahead with the class selectors. A class selector is nothing but a DOM and the attribute definition injected through a uh, attribute uh, thing called class and that value being given here. And it could be repeated anyway. Any DOM can take this particular class attribute and have follow the same whatever styles you specified here. So in style sheet, we have three type of selectors, tag selector, ID selector, and of course, a class selector. Depending on which is useful or what could be used, put into use, it's up to you. And there is no uh, kind of a clear guidelines like this is a performance driven or this is something not performance. No, it's actually your design pattern, whatever the pattern you select. What we have just seen here is a basic template which is going to contain a standard header, footer, left, right and center uh, area box for content. Having something on board, removing others will create another combination of your template. So you can, end, uh, you can create a number of templates using this kind of simple approach. So any website, if you see, in, uh, if you go through the website, so which is listed in your whatever, like, you know, Google or wherever you see, which usually follow this pattern. There may be header, there may be footer, there may be uh, left bar, there may not be a left bar or right bar, but something missing, something on board, or something is added further. So maximum it is going to be with that. One second. Take a call. Hello. 